एथ मैन डीवीडी I don't think you understand. I'm from the Internal Revenue Service. That's a department of the... <laughs> Hop in that puddle jumper and cut mud out of here. But, but, but I only want to talk about Mr. Clifford's return. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you keep hanging around here, you ain't going nowhere neither. <laughs> now, see here, madam, I insist... Oh. <laughs> I'll be back! I'll be waiting! What's all the ruckus, Granny? Who was that? Dad blame revenue. -er. You sure? <laughs> Came right out and admitted it himself. Hmm, well, we don't want no trouble with the law. And besides, you said you were going to stop running your steel. I ain't been. But I don't want no revenue -er snooping around. They're the lowest form of varmints. Even he was ashamed of being one. What? Called it the Infernal Revenue Service. <laughs> Internal Revenue Service? That's right. Well. Sit down, sit down. Oh, thank you. Well, now, it's a pleasure to have you visit my struggling little bank. Go ahead. Uh. There we are. Yes, it's, it's always a pleasure to see you splendid chaps from the Internal Revenue Service. <laughs> you know, I was, just, I was just talking to my tax man yesterday. Aspen? <laughs> no. Mr. Drysdale, I'm not here to talk about your income tax return. You're not? No. But your tax man did handle the return for Mr. J.D. Clampett. Right? Oh, yes, yes. Mr. Clampett is my largest depositor. Wonderful man. Salt of the earth. Honest as a day is long. Lovely family. Mm. Uh, Mr. Drysdale, I was just fired on by a member of that lovely family. Fired on, you mean shot at? Mm -hmm. With a double barrel, 12 gauge shotgun. Wielded expertly by a little old lady no bigger than this. Granny. Oh, Mr. Landman, you, you have to understand these people. Oh, I understood her fine. <laughs> what I don't understand is this. How can a man show an income of millions for last year and not one red penny for all the years previous? Oh, well, well, I, I can explain that. Well, the Treasury Department will appreciate it. Now, this is the beautiful mansion you just visited, right? Well, I would hardly call it a visit. Skirmish might be a better word. <laughs> this is the house, yes. Hey, Mr. Landman, would you believe that eight months ago they lived here? No, frankly, I wouldn't. I give you my word. The poorest, most uninformed people imaginable. By when an oil company tried to explore their swamp, old Jed's daughter hit him with a rock. Thought he was a revenue. <laughs> what you got there? Stranger. Where'd you get him? I pinged him with a rock. What for? He was skulking around down by the slough. Figured he might be a revenue. He ain't no revenue. -er. Then can I keep him? Of course not. Well, I called him. No matter. Well, he won't be no trouble. I could keep him out in the smokehouse. Well, Eddie May, you can't keep people like they were dogs and cats. Who's that? Some feller Ellie found nosing around. 
Beanie with the rock so it'd be easier to tote. <laughs> They're fellas from the petroleum company. What's a petroleum? I don't know. He asked me if he could do some wildcatting down by the sloop. I said, help yourself. We're glad to get rid of the critters. <laughs> what he said? Just kind of laughed. The last on him, there ain't no wildcats down there at that slough. Heck no, it's too full of oil. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me they didn't know oil was valuable? Even when the oil company geologists told them, they didn't understand. Mr. Clampett, that swamp of yours is full of oil. I could have told you that. Well, my company would like to pump it out. Yeah, I like that too, but I just can't afford to have it done. <laughs> oh, no, 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 you don't understand. You see, you wouldn't have to pay for it. Oh, I don't take favors from strangers. No, 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 Mr. Clampett, you see, uh, you're a very rich man. Stranger, if money was skunk oil, a hound dog couldn't smell me. It's a swamp. My company will buy that land while they'll raise so many derricks down there that... Son, I gotta be honest with you, you couldn't raise turnips down there. He's right. That ground looks black and rich. But it's so greasy, you can just squeeze the oil out of it. But that's what my company wants. Maybe you better sit down for a spell. <laughs> Why, even after Mr. Clapp had sold his swamp, he didn't know how much money he'd gotten until his cousin Pearl heard the news and came rushing over. Help me! Help me! Hold on! Help me! Help me! Help me! I think they sure want the chicken house. Oh, Dad, I'm sure sorry about the chicken house, but nobody got hurt. Jeffro, I told you to get rid of them worn-out brakes. I did, Ma. That's how come we ain't got none. Get on out and lift the chicken house back on its foundation. Dad? Jed, Ellie Mae came running over to my place and she said you sold the swamp to some oil company. Well, yeah, I guess I did. What did they pay you for it? Well, he ain't paid me nothing yet. The Brewster fella said he'd bring the money later. How much they gonna pay you? Well, uh, he said I'd depend some on how much oil they could pump out. Well, he must have mentioned some figure. What was it? Now, Pearl, you know that old swamp weren't where it shucks. Jed Lampett, you got slickered and you're ashamed to admit it. That's just what I told you. Granny, how much they gonna pay him? All right, I'll tell you. He said it runs somewhere between 25 and 100. 25 and 100? I know it don't sound like much, but Mr. Brewster seemed to set great store by the fact he's gonna pay me in some new kind of dollar. There ain't no new kind of dollar. Well, it's new to me. I've heard of gold dollars, silver dollars, paper dollars, but he says he's gonna pay me in, uh, what do you call them, Granny? Million dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Million dollars? Well, he wrote the whole thing out on this piece of paper. Here, you can see for yourself. Yeah, I don't know nothing about that. Let's see here. Thanks in heaven. <coughs> Granny, give me the jug. It's empty, but I'll fetch some. I'll go, Granny. Jed. Jed. You're a millionaire. A millionaire. Yeah, that's what that Brewster fella kept calling me. I didn't know just how to take it. <laughs> he meant you're rich. Me? The richest man in these hills. Maybe in the whole state. Oh, Jed, you can have anything you want. Do anything you want. Go any place you want. Yeah, that's another thing he kept saying. He said he reckoned I'd be moving away from here soon. What do you think, Pearl? You think I ought to move? Jed, how can you even ask? Look around you. You're eight miles from your nearest neighbor. You're overrun with skunks, possums, coyotes, bobcats. You use kerosene lamps for light. You cook on a wood stove summer and winter. You're drinking homemade moonshine, washing with homemade lye soap. And your bathroom is 50 feet from the house and you ask, should you move? Yeah, I reckon you're right. Man, 
be a dang fool to leave all this. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, in the Internal Revenue Service, we hear some pretty wild stories. But this uh, corn pone to caviar saga of Jed Clampett tops everything. Well, if you think it's been unbelievable so far, wait till you hear the rest of it. What I can't understand is how a man so insulated from the rest of the world ever heard about Beverly Hills, California. I can explain that in two words. <laughs> Cousin Pearl. She's the one who had her sights set on California. Oh, there you are, Jed. You misunderstood me. I meant you should move away. And you know where I'd go if I was you? Where? California. California? Yes, sir. Beverly Hills, California. I hear tell it's full of millionaires out there. And movie stars, too. And what? Movie stars. <laughs> Jed, remember the time that your pa took us to Eureka Springs to see the movie picture? Yeah. Well, the actors that make their movie pictures live in Beverly Hills. Go on. Yes, sir. Well, doggy. Wouldn't it be something? Living in the same neck of the woods with old town me. It sure would. And we could come visit you. <laughs> you know what else they say about California? You don't get cold out there. What don't get cold out there? Nothing don't get cold out there. They don't have no snow or no ice. Can't they bring some in? <laughs> they don't want it. That's why it'd be so good for Granny. Remember last winter when she slipped on the ice and broke her hip? Yeah, poor old woman. She was limping for two days. <laughs> Well, that couldn't happen in California because they don't have no ice. How come? I don't know how come. But grinding sure like it, and we could visit you. <laughs> Maybe Jethro know how come there's no ice. He's going to school. We could ask him. Jethro? Yeah, Ma? Come on over here. Speaking of school, Ellie May could get herself a fine education out there in Beverly Hills. Yeah, Ma? Your rich uncle's got a question he'd like to ask you. What rich uncle, Ma? Your rich uncle, Jay. Jethro, how come there's no ice in California? Don't look at me. I didn't take it. <laughs> you big jumbo, I didn't, Ma. Oh, get out of here. Well, you always do. I don't know. I don't mean it. I was saying, Jeff, folks claim California's got it all beat. Why, things grow twice as big out there. Jethro would be a whopper, wouldn't he? <laughs> he could help you move. He's awful handy at lifting and toting, and he could drive you out in my truck. I tell you what, Pearl, I'm going to have to study on this. When that Brewster feller comes back, I'll ask him what he thinks. Yes, it was Cousin Pearl who planted the idea of moving to Beverly Hills, but it was Mr. Brewster who made it possible. Now, uh, who's he? Vice president of the oil company that bought Mr. Clampett's land. Yes, Brewster's often told me the story of that fateful evening. Well, your cousin is right about that, Mr. Clampett. Beverly Hills is a choice residential area, and lots of millionaires do settle there. Folks like me, huh? Well, uh, millionaires. And movie stars, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is Tom Mix there? No. I'm afraid Mr. Mix is dead. Oh? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's the matter with you? Remember Pearl? He got shot at the end of that picture. <laughs> well, there are plenty of other movie stars, and that's where Jed wants to live. Ain't it, Jed? I do like the notion of living in the hills. Never could stand flat country. Mr. Clampett, I, I think it only fair. Uh, that is, well, I think you may have a wrong idea about Beverly Hills. Is that where you live? Uh, no, my home is in Tulsa. Well, see, maybe you could get us a place there in your neighborhood. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, let's not beat around the bush. 
you will love Beverly Hills. <laughs> then that's it. Can you steer Jade on to a good place? No, I can get the bank out there to handle it for him. He'd like a nice big place with plenty of room for his kinfolk to visit him. <laughs> I would like a nice, roomy place, if I could afford it. Oh, Mr. Clampett, with your money, you can afford the Taj Mahal. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> well, no, you see, I, I was just making a little joke. Oh, well, uh, go right ahead. <laughs> well, you see, uh, the Taj Mahal is in India. <laughs> You're a nice fellow, but I've heard better jokes. <laughs> Is the foreigner staying for supper? I'm ashamed to say I ain't asked him. How about it? Oh, I, I don't think so. Oh, no trouble. What you cooking tonight, Granny? Mustard greens and possum innards. Mmm. -hmm. Did you hear that, Mr. Brewster? Very clearly. Did you change your mind? Uh. Not this time. <laughs> well, if you should happen to come back tomorrow, we'll be having leftovers. That's the thing about possum innards. He's just as good the second day. <laughs> what a family. So anyway, they packed up and came to Beverly Hills. Well, it wasn't quite that simple. Mr. Clampett had his problems. With $25 million, he had problems? Ah, yes. The first one was his daughter. She didn't want to leave her friends. Friends? I thought they lived in a completely unpopulated area. They did. Her friends were not the kind you and I have. Now, I ain't gonna be here to look after you no more. So you're gonna have to keep yourself out of trouble. Watch out for them coyotes and them bobcats and them hunters with guns. Stay out of folks' garden, because you know how it riles up Granny when you get in hers. Except when we're gone, you can have everything that's left. I'm sorry there ain't gonna be room enough on the truck to take you along. But maybe you wouldn't like California anyhow. Maybe I ain't gonna like it either. If I don't, then I'm a coming hightailing it right back here, and me and you will set up housekeeping all by ourselves. Ellie? Ellie May? Yeah, Paul, over here. You feeling all right, Ellie? You didn't eat your supper. Sure, Paul. I just wasn't hungry. You cold? You're shaking like a sumac leaf. No, oh, Paul, I ain't cold. I'm scared. Scared? Why? There ain't nothing in this woods can hurt you, even in the dark. It ain't the woods or the dark. It's going so far away. I don't know what it's going to be like out there in Beverly Hills. Why, it's gonna be just like here. Except we'll have things a lot nicer. Will I go to school and wear fancy dresses like city girls and put powder on my face and get my hair all fixed up in one of them there beauty parlors? Why, sure you will. Then I ain't going. <laughs> I want you to meet the Clampets under different circumstances. You'll find them to be really charming people. Uh, including Granny? <laughs> oh, yes. This time you'll get a completely different reception. I promise you. <laughs> Ellie Mae! You sound the alarm if you see that revenue man coming. I will, Granny. I'll blast him before he gets through that gate. <laughs> Of course, even after Mr. Clavett convinced his daughter to leave her animal friends, he still had Granny to contend with. I guess she didn't like the notion of being uprooted. That's putting it mildly. The way he tells it, she just downright refused to budge. Ellie, if old Duke sits there with you, there ain't gonna be room for Granny. Oh, that's all right, Paul. Granny ain't gone. <laughs> Who says she is? She says she ain't. That's right, Uncle Jed. She's just sitting on the back porch in her rocker, and she says that's as close to California as you're gonna get her. <laughs> we'll see about that. Thanks if I ain't got me the muliest women. <laughs> Preacher Jelly, now it's Granny. We ain't never gonna get there. Now, 
What's all this nonsense about you ain't going to California? Ain't no nonsense to it. If the good Lord had a wanted me in California, he'd have put me in California. Maybe he's just getting around to it. Book says he moves in mysterious ways. Well, if he moves me, I'll go. But you and Big Jethro ain't a budging me. <laughs> this your Beverly Hills sounds like the kind of place you'd like. That Bridger fella says they got smogs out there. <laughs> What's a smog? Well, me and Jethro figured out that's a small hog. <laughs> and you heard what Pearl said. You ain't got no snow out there. You could run your still year round. Run us the year round here. Yeah, but walking down through the snow to the still always makes you feel so miserable. I might feel miserable walking down. But the way I feel is coming back makes up for it. <laughs> hey, man, Mr. Granny. We've been planning and talking about this trip for days. You never said you wouldn't go. Never said I would, neither. But that Brewster feller has bought us a house in them Beverly Hills. He sent our 25 million to the bank out there. Well, you just chase on out after it. I'm staying right here. And I ain't afeard, neither. Granny, I ain't leaving you here alone. And I ain't a-budging out of this rocker. Let her roll, Jethro. <laughs> Only a man of Jed Clampett's strength and authority could have handled Granny. Uh, he'll be there when we get to the Clampett place, won't he? Oh, sure, you have nothing to worry about. There's the entrance up ahead. Yes, I know. <laughs> There's a car stopping at the gate, Granny. They closed the gate since I left. I'll get it. You know, this reminds me of an experience I had when the Clampets first moved in. I was leaving and found the gates closed. Hello. Hello. Mr. Clampett, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good, good. I need your help. Sounds like you're inside the wall. I am. Would you let me out, please? Well, you bet I will. You stay right where you are. I'll get me an axe and have you out of there in no time. <laughs> he demolished ten feet of wall before I could stop. <laughs> Granny, Mr. Drogdale's opening the gate. Good. He's leading that revenue right into a trap. <laughs> Shoot nobody. He ain't nobody. Revenuers and buzzards don't count. Go on inside and cook up some vittles. Since when is a revenuer company? <laughs> Mr. Clampett, I'd like you to meet Mr. Lamp. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Clampett. How do you do, Mr. Landman? Uh, since you're a friend of Mr. Drysdale's here, I reckon you're welcome. But as you can see, uh, we don't cut the revenuers. I'm not a revenuer, Mr. Clampett. I guess back in the hills where you come from, I'd be a tax collector. Back in the hills where I come from, you'd be a lot younger. Oh? Was the climate that healthy? Oh, it's just you wouldn't have lived to get this old. Ed, is the revenuer staying to supper? He ain't no revenuer. Well, is the foreigner staying to supper? How about it, Mr. Landman? You too, Mr. Drysdale. Uh, you're not by any chance cooking mustard greens and possum innards, are you? Not tonight. Oh, we had them last night. I'll stay. Me too. Tonight we is having leftovers. <laughs> That's the thing about possum innards. It's just as good the second day. <laughs>
This has been a Filmways presentation. Eighth Man DVD.